so James goes and takes the patient to the OR and does a radical prostatectomy. And, you know, there was one out of 12 lymph nodes positive, but PSA goes back down to uh, 0.1 as a nadir. Now what do you guys are uh, doing based on the evidence? Doesn't go to, down to undetectable. That's, that's there. Yeah, so 0.1 is tough, right? I don't know that it's a ne necessarily an actionable level. Um, I uh, would certainly counsel the patient that he is looking at the need for uh, radiation therapy and hormone deprivation therapy at some point in time. I think there's two schools of thought here. You could absolutely justify putting them on hormone deprivation therapy just based on the fact that he's got local regional disease. Um, but I would still try to go with the intent to cure for that patient. Um, the sensitivity at 0.1 for a repeat PSMA PET is not going to be great. Um, I would anticipate that PSA value is probably going to rise relatively quickly. Um, you know, if you're at 0.1 in a month, you're probably at 0 0.2, 0 0.3 at three months. Um, so I'd ha I would have a, a, a short fuse to, you know, get a PSMA PET, um, refer to my radiation oncology colleagues, get them started on androgen deprivation therapy, um, and likely for probably two to three years of hormone deprivation therapy if we're planning to go with intent to cure with salvage radiation. Okay, yeah, so let's, let's just say that PSA continued to be detectable and started going up to 0.3 in the next few months. Then he goes and sees Neelash. Um, Neelash talks about, well, why don't you talk about your, your discussion with that patient? Are we still going for the cure for these patients? And are you gonna be sending to Dr. Chisholm here? For, for intensification? Sure, so obviously in that setting, depending on the time frame, particularly from their surgery, and if they had no other risk factors and we're truly just watching it and just the PSA is the, the spark plug for us to consider salvage radiation, uh, I would strongly uh, typically do another PSMA PET scan just to make sure we're not seeing any radiographic evidence of disease um, that could be like a, a isolated lymph node as well. But in the setting that there's nothing outside of the pelvis um, the treatment would be kind of a definitive curative intent. So we would talk to the patient about that, which would be um, essentially full course salvage radiation therapy to the pelvis and prostate bed along with ADT. And typically these patients now, we've seen them have molecular studies, genomic profiling. So if they were high risk on Decipher, you know, I typically tell them like, you know, we want to do minimum 18 to 24 months of ADT if, you can, if the patient can tolerate it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So David, uh, speaking of ADT plus, you know, are you intensifying these high risk patients? Now this patient has node positivity on PSMA PET scan, but negative on conventional imaging. Which one are you choosing here to really dis discuss that risk? And are you gonna give that patient, you know, the stampede two years of ADT plus abiraterone or? Yeah, sure. So uh, looking at the patient in terms of uh you know, the risk factors for it. I would certainly consider ADT for a minimum of the three years with consideration of adding two years of abiraterone to intensify the treatment. What we have shown over the last decade or two is intensification is, is, is key if you want to go for cure. So if this patient is eligible for cure, I, I would uh, by all means try to do both and uh, with no positive disease and with a high Gleason, so. I agree, I mean, I think this is a refractory disease already, seeing surgery, and then now gonna get add radiation, you may as well add abiraterone for two years and try to go for it all. Okay, now let's switch over to uh, talk about biochemical recurrence. Uh, we had some interesting data from the Abark study. Uh, maybe uh, Dr. Gotti, if you wanna talk to us about how you use that data in your practice. Yeah, I mean, I think actually in this scenario, something like Embark probably ends up more being a urology sort of management point step, right? So this was, these were patients who are, you know, achieved biochemical recurrence and they still, I think, I believe they still use conventional imaging in an Embark, right? And so, um, again, still not the perfect real world patient where we're using PSMA scans all the time and then really getting a feel for that. Uh, one interesting thing too is that there was a UCLA or maybe UCSD somewhere in California there was a group that started that studied you know what is the the rate of biochemical recurrence that is truly non-metastatic as well, um, and 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 so uh, when they looked at PSMA scans that rate ended up being about two percent of that entire population. So this group you know um, 
you know, I think, I think they looked at more non-mesh like cash resistant populations. It was a slightly different group, but, but some of these nuances you will find as we're transitioning the scanning, you know, of PSMA up front as well. Exactly. So there was an interesting um, arm that looked at enzalutamide by itself without the ADT. Mm -hmm. Have you been offering that uh, to any of your patients, um, you know, urologists included? Yeah. I think a lot of our patients uh, really don't want to be on lifelong ADT. Mm -hmm. um, even intermittent, it, it can really Im impact their quality of life. Um, and so have you successfully implemented single-age and ARSI such as uh, enzalutamide in some of these patients that had these concerns? Wesley? Well, I, I have. Um, I mean, it's a very narrow niche patient. I mean, if, if I'm going to start using single agent um, enzalutamide, I'm going to try to follow to the letter of the law what Embark implied, you know, rapid PSA doubling time, negative imaging. Of course, I'm doing a lot of PSMA PET CT scans. So that somewhat excludes quite a few patients because very few of them are going to be M0 these days, that stage migration that you mentioned before. So I've probably got, I don't know, five to 10 patients in my practice that are on single agent enzalutamide right now. And um, the tolerance has been good. Gynecomastia issues, of course, are kind of one of the, the bigger concerns. Um, so we've used an astrozole to help with that. Um, but um, yeah, the PSA responses have been good and reliable and durable. Um, I think the tolerance overall has been pretty good as well. Okay. James, have any thoughts on that as well? I have a, a few on single agent kind of enzalutamide, but, but I, I see Wes's patients in and out seeing some of our advanced prostate uh, practice, advanced practice providers that, that do APC stuff. Um, and they seem happy. I mean, their, their testosterones are normal. They tend to have a little bit less of the fatigue. And, and so I agree. I think it's, it's a niche, especially with stage migration with PSMA PET, we're just not seeing M zero folks. Um, but the folks that are on it tend to, tend to do pretty well. I don't know how much to, to add about the durability. Um, yeah, I mean, but, I'm, my goal would be two years on, and then per the trial, kind of take them off, and hopefully you can get another two years. And I guess that's kind of the new intermittent hormone deprivation therapy, especially with met-directed therapy, kind of filling that role, at least in my practice. And so Dr. Gani also mentioned an important point that, you know, this Embark population, uh, I think their median PSA was around five. And as you know, if we did PSMA PET scans on all of these patients, yeah. <laughs> how many percent of these patients would be positive, right? Sure. So um, there's actually another uh, study called the ERA STEP study that's actually using PSMA PET scan um, as a you know inclusion criteria. So I think we're looking forward to results from that. So let's now fast forward uh, to talk about uh, patients that have the novo metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer. Okay, so now similar patient, but now has synchronous metastasis, shows up in the hospital with a PSA of 600, uh, extensive bone metastasis seen on bone scan, and also conventional imaging, um, maybe two liver metastases, and this patient is diagnosed in the hospital. First of all, are you still doing a biopsy? Uh, let's, let's see if there's some uh, you know, disconnect be between urology and medical oncology, I would say. Is PSA of 600 good enough for the diagnosis? Uh, I think it kind of depends a little bit on the insurer and how comfortable the hospital is. If you're going to initiate therapy with something like a short-acting um, hormone blockade like Furbagon in the hospital setting, which is what we have, which would be fast-acting um, for someone with a PSA at that level, um, our hospital would sometimes like to know that there's tissue diagnosis. It's not. I've, I've certainly started men on treatment without tissue diagnosis when their PSA is at that level before. Sure. Dr. Chisholm, do you like to ask your urologist for tissue diagnosis in a patient like that or? Not, not in that situation, uh, not from the, the prostate. You might consider a liver biopsy and right. being at a distant yeah. site. Really easy to do a uh, high yield uh, confirming the uh, diagnosis with tissue. Uh, also considering, uh, you know, genomic studies, mm -hmm. although you can do it with liquid tissue biopsies as well. But, uh, you know, if we can do it safely, I, I could go ahead and do that. This is something I struggle with and, and I saw a patient who clearly has prostate cancer. He shows up just like this patient, right? He's got a PSA of 1700. And then my struggle is 
the insurer thing, yeah, sure. I mean, I can convince an insurer that he's got prostate cancer, but but what about you know somatic testing down the line? Does he need that for future treatments? So that's that's yeah. interesting to hear you guys say that. The liquid biopsy as good as a tissue biopsy? Yeah, it's a great question. So, like you know, I think when we look at across different tumor types, you know, each of these two, each of these tumors will will give you different amounts of ctDNA per the tumor type. I think prostate is is you know somewhere maybe in the middle. It's not like the, the worst of the worst. Uh, you know, like some of our kidney patients don't just express a lot of ctDNA, and so um, typically when you add tissue and liquid together, the rate of detection improves by about ten to twenty percent. So we do like to have both components of, of the puzzle, you know, just to, just to say we've looked at every last little step in, 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 their, in their possible treatment. Yeah. Particularly when we're having more uh, actual targets or more oral therapies that patients may be uh, a, a candidate for right. and for consideration of clinical trials. Yeah. Yeah, so let's just say this patient um, is only mildly symptomatic, but you know, has this new diagnosis of metastatic prostate cancer, presumably. And we, we did do a CT guided liver biopsy just to confirm, and then discharge the patient. Did you want to discharge the patient um, on ADT? Like, you know, I think usually in the hospital, they, they will let you do um, uh, the antagonist, but maybe not the, the lupuloid, right? Right. Um, then when they get to the outpatient setting, do you want to now also look at the new uh, molecular imaging, or does it not matter? Have you already decided what kind of volume that patient has to just be that CT and bone scan? Just based on uh, what's already cited, it's involved in the liver. This is a patient that has really, uh, you know, uh, that's a poor prognostic sign and it's a high risk factor. One could quantify the number of bone lesions, but uh, I think in any case, at my, if he's a, a good functional status, you're thinking triplet therapy. You want to intensify and add uh, docetaxel plus uh, uh, antigen receptor pathway inhibitor. And uh, the, only if the patient's not a good functional status, would, I would not be willing to do that. But given liver involvement, that, that would be my ratio. Thank you.